As Christians, we use symbols to visually express our faith's basic tenet and remind us of our pilgrimage of life in Christ. Symbols can have heightened meaning for us when associated with particular seasons of that journey. One such symbol is the Advent wreath. The Advent wreath has its roots in pre-Christian practices of Northern Europe. People sought the sun's return in the dark time of the year, at the winter solstice, by lighting candles and fires. As early as the Middle Ages, Christians used fire and light to represent Christ's coming into the world. The Advent wreath developed a few centuries ago in Germany represents our waiting and hopeful expectation of our Lord Jesus Christ's return in glory. There is no one prescribed color for the candles although several traditions are current. Four natural colored candles are always appropriate and symbolize the light of the world for which we await. Four blue candles match the blue used for the Advent season, a color representing hope. Some assemblies may have the older tradition of using purple candles, keeping purple as the color for both Advent and Lent. The practice of using a pink candle for the third Sunday in Advent arose when Advent was regarded as a thoroughly penitential season, much like Lent. The third Sunday of Advent was called Gaudente Sunday, for the Latin meaning rejoice. It has its roots in the text of Philippians chapter 4 verses 4 through 6, Rejoice in the Lord always. The Advent wreath is also appropriate for daily use in home devotions. The wreath making can be a family activity using materials gathered from the yard or garden. In this video, we have daily devotions that you can celebrate at home. The devotions start with the first Sunday in Advent and end with Christmas Eve. Each daily devotion contains a reading for lighting your Advent candle, followed by an associated scripture. You may sing along with the Christmas carol music and lyrics provided. We then close with a prayer. In these devotions, we have named the candles Promise, Light, Love, and Hope. You can find plans and videos for building your own Advent wreath in the description area below. God's promise to send a Savior took a long time. As the candle of light flames, we remember that Jesus said, I am the light of the world. We light the candle of love. God first loved us, so we love him and others. The fourth candle is called hope. The candle of hope reminds us that God gives us a gift of hope, life forever with him. John 14:3. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and will take you to myself, so that where I am, there you may be also. The Bible tells us that if we have opened our heart's door to Jesus, we have been adopted to the family of God. When Jesus went back to heaven, he said that he would prepare a place for us, and someday he would come for us so that we would live with him knowing that Jesus has made a special place for us in heaven gives us hope. Let us pray. 
dear Father in heaven, we rejoice the baby Jesus born in a stable, and we rejoice that he loved us and became our Savior. Now we are hoping for what we have never seen, life forever with Jesus, our King. Amen. The fourth candle of Advent reminds us of the hope the Holy Spirit gives us. Jesus knew his followers would be lonely without him, so he told them about a plan he had, something they could hope for. John 14, 16. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. Jesus' disciple felt sad when he said he was going away until Jesus told them about the Holy Spirit. That gave them hope. When the Holy Spirit came, they were joyful. We have the hope, too, that the Holy Spirit will be with us. He will be our helper and teach us all things. That is something to hope for. Let us pray. Spirit of God, teach us to feel that you are always near. Fill us with a special hope only you can give us. Amen. The candle of hope reminds us that the Bible calls our blessed hope, that we have hope because we know Jesus will come again. Titus 2.13 While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. Jesus was ready to return to his throne in heaven, so he called his apostles around him, Peter and James and John and the others. He wanted to give them a few last instructions. The disciples asked him questions. Lord, they said, surely now you will set up your new kingdom on earth. But that wasn't what Jesus had in mind at all. Gently he told them only God the Father knew when Jesus could return and set up his kingdom. And right before their eyes, Jesus was lifted up and disappeared in a cloud. Can't you see how their mouths fell open and their eyes got big as they stared at the cloud? Then two men dressed in white stood beside them. No use looking at the sky, they said, just as Jesus went away, he will come again. Knowing that Jesus would come again filled the disciples with hope and joy.
let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the wonderful hope that is ours because we know Jesus will come again. Amen. We light four candles on the Advent wreath. For almost four weeks, we have been getting ready for the celebration of Christ's coming at Christmas. When we hope for some big event, like a birthday or vacation, we don't forget all about it. We try to be ready. The candle of hope reminds us that we must be ready. Luke 12, 40. You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. When it was time for Jesus to return to his Father in heaven, the disciples were told that he would come to earth again. At first, the disciples expected Jesus to come back right away. They probably didn't think long years would go by. Then they remembered Jesus had told them that they were to be witnesses for him. A witness tells what he has seen, what has happened to him. The disciples loved Jesus and wanted everyone to know about his life and death. We too can talk about Jesus and be a witness for him. The way to be ready for Jesus is to love him, tell others about him, obey him, and love one another. Let us pray. O oh Lord, we want to be ready. Fill us with hope as we wait for your coming. Amen. This is the last time this year we will light the Advent candles. For four weeks the candles have been burning as we've thought about God's promise to us, about the light His coming brings us, about His love for us, and about our hope in Him. We have been thinking of God's gift to us, Jesus our Savior. During this Advent season we have been getting our hearts ready for Christmas. Let's hold hands around the table. Each one of us may say a short prayer of thanks that for we have learned this Advent. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for the special times we have spent together this Advent as we learn more about your gifts to us. Jesus, our Savior. Amen. Listen to the story of Jesus' birth. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was a descendant from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night when an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, 
and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I bring you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what they had been told about the child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen, as it had been told them.